Christians easily be alarmed by false predictions that the day of the Lord has already come? Was a rebellion, falling away, or an apostasy predicted? How can we be sure that we're not fooled? Is standing on the bedrock teachings of Jesus important? Does the truth set us apart? Let's find out in 2 Thessalonians 2. Are Christians easily alarmed by false predictions that the day of the Lord has already come? Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together to him, that you don't be soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. What is apostasy? The original Greek word means a leaving from a previous standing. It's variously translated as rebellion, falling away, and apostasy. No one's to deceive you in any way, for it will not come unless the apostasy comes first, and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction, who opposes and exalts himself above every so-called god or object of worship, so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, displaying himself as being God. How can we be sure that we're not fooled? Do we make what Jesus taught our bedrock? Why? For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. Are the Gospels the cornerstone of our faith? Do the rest of the scriptures play a part? Are other writings from early church fathers, later church councils, and much later reformers, therefore not part of that foundation? Having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. How can this man of lawlessness be already at work and destroyed at Jesus' coming if he's a literal man? Could it be the devil? Don't you remember what I told you about all this when I was with you? And you know what's holding him back, for he can be revealed only when his time has come. For this lawlessness is already at work secretly, and it will remain secret until the one who's holding it back steps out of the way. Then the man of lawlessness will be revealed, but the Lord Jesus will slay him with the breath of his mouth and destroy him by the splendor of his coming. Even if this is a literal man or man-made movement, who's the power behind it? Has deception been around since the church began? Even he who is coming is according to the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Who's deceived? Was this partly their own choice? What did they choose to refuse? It will happen with every sort of wicked deception of those who are heading toward destruction because they've refused to love the truth that would allow them to be saved. Why will people believe a lie? Was it their choice in the first instance? So God will make sure they're fooled into believing a lie. All of them will be punished because they would rather do evil than believe the truth. Are those who God chooses set apart by the Holy Spirit and a belief in the truth? But we ought always to give thanks to God for you, brothers, beloved by the Lord, because God chose you as the first roots to be saved 
through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth. How are we called into truth? Whose teachings should they hold fast? He called you to this through our gospel, so that you might obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brothers, stand firm and hold to the traditions or teachings you were taught, either by our message or by our letter. Who can strengthen us? May our Lord Jesus, the Messiah himself, and may God our Father, who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal comfort and good hope, encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good action and word. Can Christians easily be alarmed by false predictions that the day of the Lord has already come? Was a rebellion, falling away, or an apostasy predicted? How can we be sure that we're not fooled? Is standing on the bedrock teachings of Jesus important? Does choosing the truth set us apart? You decide.